Drink water when you feel thirsty or drink two liters of water per day. After all, two liters is for everyone. Should I drink water at night? Well, there is a lot of information on the internet. One hour a professional comes and says one thing, then another professional comes and says something completely opposite. And today I want to demystify this for you. Thousands of years ago, our primitive ancestors used to drink water straight from rivers, lakes to quench their thirst. In the past, water was vital for survival, not based on whether one felt thirsty or not. People were feeling thirsty and drinking water from the sources they had available, like rivers and lakes. As our civilization advanced, humans acquired the knowledge of directing water by constructing fountains, aqueducts, and subsequently the plumbing systems that are still in use in the present day. However, even so, the idea of consuming a particular quantity of water on a daily basis remained undisclosed. No one used to go around saying that you had to consume one, two, or three liters of water per day. Nowadays, we're often bombarded with the idea that we need to drink a certain amount of water daily to stay hydrated and maintain our health. Is this truly necessary? We must resolve this matter once and for all without any further delay or hesitation. What causes thirst? To function properly, our body maintains a balance between water and salt levels. This balance is crucial for the well-being and optimal functioning of our organism. In this case, the primary salt that activates our thirst mechanism is sodium. It sends a signal to the brain which interprets it as thirst, prompting us to drink and quench our thirst. That is the identical table salt we utilize to season the meat. And that is the reason, in reality, when you exceed with the seasoning, put an excessive amount of salt, and you consume this extremely salty meal, you typically feel thirsty immediately afterward to restore the balance of the quantity of sodium you just consumed. However, there are additional salts that also take part, such as potassium, magnesium, calcium, and also glucose precisely. Sugar is a key factor in maintaining this balance and also activates mechanisms that make us feel thirsty. That is the rationale behind why individuals with diabetes experience increased urination and have a higher water intake, as the excessive sugar in their bodies triggers signals indicating the necessity for additional water consumption. If you go a long time without drinking water, your body naturally loses water to the atmosphere. After all, we lose water through breathing, we lose water through sweat and also through chemical reactions within our body and also through urine. If you don't replenish this water, you're going to have a balance that we call a negative water balance. Dehydration leads to water loss and an increase in sodium concentration in the body due to this fluid imbalance. That is detected by sensors in our brain which are known as osmoreceptors. These sensors will detect if your blood is becoming too concentrated, indicating a potential issue with the levels of hydration in your body. And that's going to make you activate the mechanisms, the symptoms of thirst. So you mean I can only consume water when I'm experiencing thirst, correct? Correct and incorrect. Let's proceed. Our body has an exceptional capacity for adaptation. Recent studies have provided compelling evidence that when you initiate an increase in this concentration referred to as plasma osmolarity, prior to your body activating thirst mechanisms, before it communicates the need to drink water, it engages other intricate mechanisms that are specifically designed to retain water within our body. The primary characteristic of this is a hormone called vasopressin. This hormone is an antidiuretic hormone, and it is going to cause your body to retain more fluid, thereby leading to a higher concentration of urine and a prioritization of water for vital functions and maintaining overall bodily equilibrium. Only after a certain period of time does the osmolarity begin to increase, and it is at that point that our body will initiate the mechanisms that result in the sensation of thirst. If we consider it from an evolutionary perspective, this is highly advantageous because in the past, Water was not readily accessible as it is now, so we had to actively seek out and obtain water. Prior to activating the thirst mechanisms, the body retains resources to conserve water, which is the antidiuretic hormone, also referred to as vasopressin, a hormone that helps in reducing urine production. Does that bring any trouble? 
Generally not, because that dissimilarity is typically minimal in magnitude and impact. So when you feel thirsty, you go to that place and consume that water, thereby restoring the hydroelectrolytic balance, typically without giving rise to any additional significant issues for your body. So you must conclude that you should only drink water when you're thirsty. After all, that doesn't bring any problem because you'll drink water without feeling thirsty. Let's go. This part of the video is really important, so pay attention here. If you just keep that information from the video, I'll be happy. The message will have been conveyed. Stop and think about your last few days. How many times have you felt thirsty? It's very common when we're focused on a task, working, doing any kind of activity that requires our concentration, that we ignore the signs of thirst. How many times have you spent the entire morning, the entire afternoon, occasionally the entire day without consuming water, without visiting the restroom, and only at the conclusion of the day when your body was indicating with symptoms like parched mouth, headache, dry eyes, then you made the decision to drink water. Due to our daily routine, we often fail to notice these subtle signs of thirst that our body sends us. And another thing, if you don't already have the habit of drinking water, of feeling that thirst, of actively seeking water, many times your body starts to get used to a lower level of dehydration. So what's going to happen? You'll only feel thirsty when the concentrations are even higher. And yes, that can indeed bring trouble for you. So how do you determine? I consume two liters, I consume a specific quantity, I consume when I'm thirsty. If you notice, if you're the kind of person who already has the habit of drinking water and whenever there's a change you feel thirsty, chances are your system is working just fine. So you shouldn't have any problem with only drinking water when you feel thirsty. Now, if you're that person who says, oh, I don't feel thirsty all day, I go through the day without feeling thirsty, my body doesn't need water, that's where the big problem lies. If you don't feel thirsty, there's a certain danger there that you're not knowing how to interpret the signs of thirst. And how do you go about learning that? Start chugging water, dude. You're going to feel changes in your body. You're going to start noticing improvements in the hydration of your mouth, improvements in the hydration of your skin, improvements in the hydration of your eyes. Improves headache issues. Dehydration is a major cause of headaches. Sometimes a person comes at the end of the day with that headache and they're just dehydrated because they didn't drink water. So commence observing yourself. Commence drinking water. You are going to commence learning how to feel thirsty. How much water should I drink? There's an average calculation, 35 milliliters per kilo of weight. So if you weigh 70 kilos, do the math. 35 times 70 equals 2,450, approximately two and a half liters. Why do I say it's an average calculation? Because if you reside in hotter regions, if you engage in strenuous physical activities where you perspire abundantly, if you converse frequently, if you are an educator, for instance, if you deliver numerous lectures and communicate extensively, you will lose a greater amount of water through these mechanisms. So you should increase that consumption even more. We suggest a range of 35 to 50 milliliters per kilogram of body weight for individuals engaging in activities that result in water loss. Another important detail, very salty meals and meals where you have a high glucose load, sugar, in other words, sweets, cakes, this type of food also requires you to drink more water. Agreed? So here's another question. What if I have kidney stones? And what if you have a kidney stone? There's no talking about it, no discussion. You gotta drink water even if you're not thirsty. Water for you is medicine. It's about preventing the stone from forming. And this small change that will release the vasopressin hormone before you feel thirsty is enough to concentrate your urine and start forming a kidney stone. So if you have kidney stones, you need to consume a minimum of two and a half liters of water in order to achieve a minimum of two liters of diuresis.
because it is crucial to always ensure that your urine is well diluted in order to prevent the formation of a kidney stone. One tip I give is also to observe the color of your urine, the color of your pee. Your urine should be from transparent to light yellow. If your urine is clearer, it indicates that during that period you utilized your body's resources to conserve water and that became excessively concentrated. Your pee. Just a heads up, this urine color doesn't count for the first pee in the morning, okay? The first pee in the morning, obviously, is more concentrated because we spend the night without drinking water and naturally our body produces this antidiuretic hormone in the deepest phases of sleep to prevent us from peeing at night and waking up. After all, a good night's rest is crucial for maintaining the balance of our body. Is that acceptable? If you have any questions, feel free to leave them here in the comments. Comment here if you usually drink water only when you feel thirsty, if you've gone a few days without feeling thirsty and didn't realize you were dehydrated, so we can better understand how our body works. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Dr. Thiago and see you in the next video.